Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AxesOfTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody had a, a good day. Um, you know, if, if, if my calculations are correct, and again, I'm not really a smart guy, but one, two, three. If, if Tesla goes up, right? Figure, if Tesla goes up 130 points a day for the next three, four days, I figure, carry the three, I, I figure they should be around twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars a share by Friday, the latest by Monday. I mean, <laughs> absolutely nuts. Uh, Tesla is just it's just on a different level right now. Um, you know, people always say all the time, like you know, how, what was the dot com like? What was the dot com like? This is pretty close, right? This is pretty close for all you guys who did trade in ninety nine uh, in two thousand. This is pretty close. This is pretty damn close. This is a ferocious. This is this is not even a short squeeze. This is like, you know, this is a widow maker. Um, but, and again, before, I, before you think it's only on the short side, just understand what we were watching today on Tesla, we were watching $10 moves in one interval. Now, when I mean interval, not a 60 minute channel. I know some of you guys uh, that do have reference points um, in the live webinar, some of you guys still watch these one minute channels. At, at some point, Tesla was putting up like a $10 move up or down within one or two minutes. I mean, just the most amazing thing. It's just absolutely amazing. Um, I didn't want any piece of it today. I, I really didn't. Uh, there was a big upgrade today and I, I just perfectly stated, and, and I feel this way, and it's very, very important to understand. It, again, it's not the sexiest way to the goal line, okay? We, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to make an old Dell Beckham one-handed catch, uh, kind of like the matrix, okay? What we want to do every single day as professional traders. I don't care what kind of trader you are. We, we want to make sure we grind it out that we're in control. When, when you have an interval, and again, if you're long this thing, God bless. Okay, I'm not trying to spite you. But if you're trading any stock, what you want to do is have control. When you have a stock trading at a $10 interval every minute, that's a problem. Uh, and again, it's an incredible short squeeze, uh, call buyers all over the place. The 850s, 855s, 900s, just insane. But but again, I, I, I want to make sure every single day we're, we're positioned in a situation that we're not going. We're not blinded by the lights. Again, yes, everybody wants to catch a 10, 15, 20, 30-point move in like 30 seconds. I get it. I would sign up in a heartbeat for it as well. It's just not realistic. It's like it's like certain you know areas of expectations that you have. It, it really is trying to hit Powerball every single time you put on the trade, and eventually bad things are going to happen. And again, you know, if you are you know trading and you're you're, you're fixated on Tesla, and it's and yes, amazing moves, but you, you really are missing out some pretty good uh, two sided opportunities that we've been seeing uh, in the markets, um, especially today. I, you know, again, the ironic part about today, and this is what's what makes trading the, the greatest reality show that's not on television. I came in I came in with a 955 sell bias, okay? So the fact that we gapped up today, if you looked at if you looked at China overnight, you said, "Wow, it's down 6-7%, the futures are up 150 points." So I came in today with a 955 and I said, "Hey man, anybody who's thinking about uh, buying that opening range, you're going to lose money." I mean, that, that was my first comments today at morning strategy, but again, at the same time, I'm not naive, I'm not stubborn. I understand that Things change. Your opinions, yes, you have to have them. You have to have an opinion going into the trading day. You have to have a bias. But if technical analysis is confirming the price action that is completely removed from your initial thesis of what's going to happen, you either sit it out or conform to what you're seeing. Okay, you, you cannot fight the tape. It's like, in other words, it's like me turning around and say, well, Facebook gapped up. It took out the opening range highs. Uh, but I still think it's going to take the test out 201. You're going to get squeezed, right? You're going to get squeezed every time. If you do the same thing with every single stock that you think is a short before the confirmation, try and anticipate where the next move is going to be. You're going to get run over. And this is what makes trading completely different than any other profession. It's ridiculously hard. It's ridiculously uh, you know, uh, unexpected. 
Uh, anybody who went home short overnight uh, on Friday, which was 100% the right thing to do, right? Think about it. Logically, you have this, this disease spreading and it's it blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden we get 150, 180 point gap up. It just doesn't make sense. So it's unpredictable. It's unforgiving. Uh, there is no scripts. And the moral of the story is it's going to put you in a position that you're going to make emotional decisions. And again, the greatest part about us trading channels, we don't need to be painted into that corner. We're going to trade what the market gives us. And if you look at the price action today, again, the scoreboard really didn't paint an accurate picture, right? We were down 600 points on Friday. We rebounded 143 points on the Dow, right? So you could turn around from a technical point of view or even a common sense point of view and say, well, wait a minute, what happened today that's so exciting, right? Uh, we put in an inside day. We made back a quarter, a third of the losses from Friday. Who the hell cares? And you're right, right? You're right. You're absolutely right. Matter of fact, they, they also put in an inverted hammer off the five-day moving average. And if you look at the 60-minute view of the diamonds, right? Right? So we're going lower. So they're right. But if you look at the NASDAQ 100, right? If you look at the NASDAQ 100, and again, just destruction on Friday. And, you know, we, we closed fairly well. And we made back, right? Even though it's an inside day as well. On the NASDAQ 100, we did make back, right? We didn't make back like 100 and something points on the Q. So it, it really is amazing, right? It really is amazing how random sometimes price action plays out. But the common denominator is when you have random price action, okay, and market structure is very unpredictable, again, the last thing you want to do is this, right? The last thing you want to do is put yourself in a position like this. And even though, again, the greatest thing since sliced bread. I'm not going to be the one who's going to fight in Tesla. You guys know, man. I've been trading Tesla for years. My favorite stock doesn't even come close. But there has to be areas of interest here trading Tesla that's going to make sense. Okay, It's going to make sense from the risk point of view. And for me today, and again, I even tweeted out at a certain point today. If you go on my t uh, timeline, I even said, hey, look, Tesla... If it reclaims 717, 718, it could wake up again. And I even said in the tweet, I don't want any piece of it. Okay, and yada, yada, yada. This thing runs up 70 points from my tweet, from my tweet. Okay, forget about what it was from the day. It was up 60 points prior to that. So just incredible things. If you're a new trader, stay away from this damn thing. It's just, it's just not for you. I understand that the lights are bright and it's shiny and looks great and you're going to be rich. But again, I know for a fact, if you are a new trader, you're not taking enough size to make a dent anyway. You're trying to get the bigger move, but what you're doing subconsciously, you are opening yourself for risk. You're building fear of missing out into your DNA. It's, and the longer you have that fear of missing out, the longer it will stay in your DNA and you will not be able to get rid of it. So yes, it looks great. It's fantastic. It's going to go to $1,000 probably by tomorrow pre-market. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. But am I really joking? So just calm down. Calm down. There's other areas that you can take advantage of that I believe will give you a bigger bang for your buck. So let's talk about today. Uh, again, I, you know, ironically, you know, most of the trades today were to the upside. The only trade today was BYND. I mean, it was a really, really strong pivot, right? Really, really strong pivot on uh, BYND on Friday. If you guys remember, we talked about this on the, on the video, uh, the 1288 breakdown to, uh, to 108, right? To 108. And we talked about this on the video. I said 108 is going to be uh, a potential area of interest there, and it was. This was, uh, you know, this was the first really big move of the day. We'll talk about this in a second, uh, but this was the, definitely the first big move of the day. I caught this pretty nicely. Uh, so here was BYMD. We talked about that 108, right? We talked about that 108, and I accidentally, the reason why I'm, I'm showing you this on my regular account, by accident, I put it into, so I apologize for all you guys on the Twitter feed. By accident, I put it out in the real, in my main account for everybody to see. Uh, so, for all you guys who did take this trade, congratulations. But again, I apologize. Uh, so again, if it builds uh, on 108, can get hit. Bottom channel is 103.80s. And it was beautiful. It was a beautiful, beautiful trade. Uh, that second entry was perfect. Here's the 108, right? Here was the 108. I said it could get down to 103. It got down to 102.43. So it was a really, really good, uh, good trade. I was very, very happy with it. Uh, and then just things got like, again, I was looking at Roku. Again, if you guys remember the video from the weekend, I said, hey, I'm looking at this thing. If it builds below 120, it's going to get hit. And next thing you know, Roku comes out with earning. Uh, Roku comes out with some news. And I said, look, you know, and, and I, again, I go, just in case the market holds up, right? And the same thing you saw that 
with Netflix. Netflix I butchered big time, big time. Um, but Roku, I said, if, if, if it wakes up, right, just in case, just in case the market turns around and doesn't die out, if it starts building 124.90, 125, needs to build just in case for upside expansion. And here is Roku, just a big move on Roku, right? Just a really, really big move on Roku. Here is right here. Here is the whole channel right here. This 124.90, 125, and its stock ex it exploded. You know, this thing went to all the way 129.48. Um, I butchered Netflix. I did. I butchered Netflix. I really did. Um, I butchered Netflix. And so... Here is the bill, right? 349.50.50. Okay. And if, if you saw how Netflix was trading this morning, it was trading really crappy. Like really, really crappy. Like 30, 40 cent spreads, 100 share lots, really, really crappy. So I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, if it takes out this 350, I want to get long. I know there's areas there, 350, 353, and it's going to break out. So I buy this thing on the 350 break, right? It goes up a little bit, and then they drop the bid like 75 cents. Remember, keep an eye on this 100 share lots. And I'm sitting there, and I'm sitting there. I go, man, I'm going to get killed in this thing, okay? So a buyer comes in. A buyer comes in. Early buyer comes in. I think it was for the 355 calls. Stock still doesn't go, right? So I wind up. It pops a little bit. So I wind up. Taking a small profit. Again, I always believe in the theory. If it doesn't feel right, just get out. Again, it's the money you save, not the money you make, that's going to add value to your account. And I was right, right? I was right. The stock goes down about 70, 80 cents again. I go, okay. Next thing I turn around, I literally turn around. I mean, this is not even a joke. I literally turn around. You start seeing, and you guys saw this throughout the whole day, 370, 380, 400 calls. Over and over and over and over, and the damn thing explodes. What are you going to do, right? You can't, you know, again, in this business, it's all about making adult decisions, capital preservation, go on to the next one, right? Go on to the next one. And it sucks. You know what? It sucks. But look, you have to be an adult about this. You don't get any take, you know, you don't get any, um, any mulligans. And the bottom line is if those masterful, magical sweeps didn't come, I would have been having this conversation down two, three dollars. So again, the safe bet is always the out. If you don't feel comfortable, you could always get out, get back in. But by the time I got in, I looked up, it was already four dollars higher. I felt disgusting. But again, it is what it is. Again, huge, huge call buyers coming in. At one point, that's all we saw on the option scanner today. 400 calls, 400 calls, 400 calls. So I think this thing's going to break out tomorrow. But yeah, it's definitely a big miss. So Roku was good. Ro Netflix was good. Not for me. Made a cup of coffee on this thing. Uh, BYND was good. I was very, very happy with the trade. Uh, let me show you guys some other uh, pivots we had today uh, in the webinar and obviously in the private feed as well. Uh, if this thing would ever load. Okay, so here it is right here. I, again, as you see here, you know, I had all shorts, right? I had literally all shorts pre-market because I figured, well, you know, the market's going to come in and these things. So no, obviously none of these things triggered, right? None of these things triggered. None of these things got confirmed. Uh, Netflix, again, exploded. Uh, NVIDIA obviously never got down there. Again, I was prepared on the short side. It just never, you know, never happened. Uh, Roku exploded. Uh, good job for all you guys who took that initial move on Gilead. Gave like a dollar and change move. Uh, 67.50. And a good, I think it was Asif who gave us uh, the heads up in the webinar. So uh, thank him for you guys who made money. I, I didn't take this trade. I had nothing to do with this thing. Uh, his idea, great job. 67.50 rejection twice needs to build. And if you look at Gilead, uh, if you look at Gilead, uh, here is the 67.50 right here. 67.50, 67.50. So it took out the 67.50. And went to like 68, 70. So again, dollar and change very, very quickly. If you took it, good job there as well. Uh, Roku, like I said, take on the way up. Uh, take on the way up on Netflix. <clears throat> okay. Uh, NOW I like for tomorrow. It, it, it made its initial move. Obviously, it didn't. Uh, it didn't make its second move. Uh, 380. This is late in the day. It, got, it almost got to 360. I, that's the magic number going if it's tomorrow. So good job. And the most amazing part is I, kind, I think I kind of found a small cap arbitrage. The reason why I say that, I've been messing around with something. I want to show you guys something. I've been messing around with something. I know a lot of you guys have been requesting like some of these small cap stocks. So 
I've been messing around with something, okay? And by the way, congratulations to, uh, who was it, Muhammad, right? Muhammad had really, really capitalized on Roku, so good job there. That's not what I want to talk about. So I started playing around, right? I started playing around with like these small caps, these areas of small caps, right? And I'm still kind of beta testing it, but I think I found a little bit of an arbitrage in these things. So I wrote this thing here. I go first dip to rising support 290s. If they could reclaim three, it can go. It went from 290s to like three, 320 very, very quickly. Put up like almost like a 10% move very, very quickly. Uh, as you can see here, it's this is when it started the move, right? It started the move. I you know, talked about a 290s. It went as high as like the 320. So big, you know, nice little move there again. So I'm trying to kind of perfect it before I even I start doing it very, very aggressively in the live webinar, but even the second one, this little one, CPHI of all things, right? 80 cents if it builds can wake up, right? If it wakes up, 80 cent builds. So check this little sucker out, right? Just, just to give you an idea, I just wanna, I'm just playing around with some things. So here's the 80 cents. Look at this, this damn thing went to 97 cents. So again, stay tuned. Again, I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna back test this thing a little bit more uh, over the weekend before we get uh, aggressive. I know some of you guys started taking those trades, but so far so good. So kind of going into tomorrow, um, you know, look, I want to remove Tesla from the equation, okay? I want to remove Tesla from the equation. Um, obviously, I think Amazon needs a couple of days to wake up. Um, let's talk about it. So let's talk about some ideas for tomorrow. I think, I, I kind of like NOW. Um, I usually don't like you know, like to talk about beta, but I, I like NOW. Look, look at the view here. Uh, if NOW starts reclaiming, uh, if NOW can start reclaiming, you know, 345 starts building 345. I think it's the next leg up here. Um, I like the ZM big move today. Big big move today. If this thing comes in, I, I like this thing on a rising support dip buy or red to green. Uh, look at Rite Aid. You know, right? Look at Rite Aid starting to come out. Right? You guys remember big big move on Rite Aid. First move here above supply. If this thing can just reclaim, start building 375. Excuse me, 1275, 1290. I think there's a shot here. This move to this 340 level. And uh, look at this RVNC, uh, look at this RVNC as well. Pretty much self-explanatory. If, if it could just start getting above, you know, 2350, 2360, it could be good. Uh, guys, please, if you're joining us tomorrow in, in the live webinar, please get there at nine o'clock. We'll talk about all the pivots tomorrow on Netflix, BYND, uh, Tesla. We'll see if they, we have an advantage there, Apple and everything else in between. Guys, God bless. Good start for the week. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.